Hello everyone and welcome back to Willow's Notes. Today we have question of the day. So pause the video and try to answer the question and then hit play so that we go over it together. Let's read the question. A certain population of frogs has three different color phenotypes. Green, brown, and orange. The color phenotype is controlled by a gene with two alleles an incompletely dominant allele, B, and a recessive allele, B. The table below summarizes the data collected from a population of 200 frogs. To test the hypothesis that the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, you conduct a chi-square test. What is the chi-square value you calculated? So the aim is to calculate the chi-square assuming that the population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. In a Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, the frequency of the homozygous dominant individuals is represented as p square. So p square is the frequency. It is not the number of individuals that are homozygous dominant. But here in the expected, we need to calculate the number of individuals who are homozygous dominant, right? So for green, we're going to go ahead and say p squared times 200. Why 200? Because we have a total of 200 frogs. Brown being heterozygous, it is expressed as 2pq. In a very similar way, we're going to say 2pq times 200 and that's going to give me the number of frogs that are brown. Finally, orange is expressed in homozygous recessive individuals, the frequency of which is q square. So let's write that under expected. So again, since let's explain it one more time. Since q square is the frequency and not the total number of individuals who are homozygous recessive, we need to multiply this frequency by 200, which will give me the total number of individuals for this question. But now, how do we find p square or q square? This information right here can give us the values of p and q. How? Let's start with p. First of all, p is the frequency of allele b. To help you understand how we're going to calculate for p, I'm going to show you a smaller population. In this small population, there are five green individuals. One, two, three, four, five. We have two brown, one, two, and one orange for a total of eight individuals. What we need to understand is that if the total number of individuals is eight, then the total number of alleles is eight times two, which is 16. Why? Because each individual has two alleles, the dominant and the recessive, or in some cases like the homozygous dominant, they have two of the dominant alleles, or the homozygous recessive that has two copies of the recessive allele. So if I want to calculate the frequency of allele B, all these five individuals have allele B. So I'm going to write five because of the five individuals, correct? Times two. Why? We just agreed because each individual has two alleles and specifically these individuals, these five, have two alleles, both dominant. Correct. But we don't stop there because not only these green individuals have the dominant allele B, the brown also have the dominant allele. And how many browns do we have? Two. One, two. So to this number, we're going to add two. Why I don't multiply this two by two? Because these individuals have one copy of the dominant allele. We don't need to multiply it by two. Finally, don't forget, we have to divide this number by the total number of alleles, which is 16. Remember, P is a frequency. We have to divide it by the total number of alleles, and here we're going to get a value of 0 0.75.
Once we have P, it's very easy to find Q. Q is one minus P, which in this case is one minus 0 0.75, which is equal to 0 0.25. So now that we saw how we find P and Q in this little small population, let's take this knowledge and apply it to our question. Therefore, P here will be equal to 150 because there are 150 frogs that are green and each green frog has two dominant alleles, so times two, and we're going to add to that the brown, which is 30 and we're going to divide it by the total number of alleles. In this case, if we have 200 frogs, then we're going to have 400 alleles. And this will give us a value of 0 0.825. Once we have P, it's easy to find Q. Q is 1 minus P, so 1 minus 0 0.825, which gives us 0 0.175. At this point, I'm just copying the numbers. I found P square, Q square, and if we multiply them by 200, we're going to get a value of 136, 58, and 6. Now that we have all the expected values, all we need to do is apply the chi-square formula, which is chi-square is equal to the sum of observed minus expected square divided by expected. So I'm just going to substitute all the values. So we have 150 minus expected, which is 136. Square that, divide that by the expected 136, and do it for all the values, which means 30 minus 58. Okay? And at the end, this will give us a value of 47.62. And that right there, 47.62 is our chi-square value and is the answer to our question. I hope you found this question easy. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!